If you've clicked on this video, you're probably struggling with user retention and engagement right from the start. You'd love to create an onboarding experience that not only retains your users, but turns them into paying customers. In this video, I'm gonna show you the exact steps I use to create an onboarding process that drives revenue. Just like the one that helps my app generate $40,000 every single month in recurring revenue. I have absolutely nothing to sell you in this video. I'm just going to show you exactly how I structure my onboardings for maximum profit. If you watch the video until the end, I guarantee that you will have the skills and knowledge to turn more visitors into paying customers for your SaaS. And before we jump into things, I just want to say thank you so much to all of you who have been subscribing. We just hit 16,000 subscribers. It means the world that you are enjoying the videos and please consider liking the video and subscribing. It keeps me motivated to keep dropping value for free, just like this. So with that being said, let's jump into it. As always, to prove that I'm not capping and I know exactly what I'm talking about, here is my revenue for the past 30 days. As you can see, in the last 30 days, we have done close to $40,000 in sales. And if we go to the last 90, we are close to $100,000 in sales. So this onboarding process really does work. And here's our ARR. We just hit $500,000 in annual recurring revenue, which is insane. So this really is proof that an onboarding flow is crucial because my onboarding flow allows me to turn more of the people who visit my product into paying customers. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So stick around until the end of this video. So what we are going to be covering is first of all, what is an onboarding, how you should prepare and do research for your onboarding, the design and the development phase of your onboarding. And then we are going to talk about optimizing your onboarding, getting feedback from users and AB testing everything. So with that being said, what is an onboarding? I am going to use my onboarding and show you exactly what my onboarding looks like to explain this. So your onboarding is your user's first experience with your product. So I have a mobile app, it's called puff count. And the first thing that my users see is this screen right here. Congratulations, reaffirming their decision to download my product and check it out. So I say, congratulations, you're on the way to a healthier lifestyle. My app helps people quit vaping. So I like to reaffirm the decision of them downloading. They have a little sign in process here. And then I have some value screens where I explain exactly what the features are in the app. And then we have social proof, which is big. We're going to go over this later, but you know, we just drop uh, some numbers here, 500,000 plus users. And then we have a user survey. This is the most important part of the onboarding. We're going to dive into the, the survey here in a second. Then we have more social proof here. And then finally the users hit my paywall and they make a decision to pay or not. So right off the jump, you can see that this onboarding is pretty extensive and that's by design. We want the onboarding to be long. We want the onboarding to be a place where users feel like they are building value for themselves within your product. And you want them to dedicate time to your onboarding right? Because if you just throw them in and you say, Hey, welcome to my app pay right now, they're not going to do that, right? You need to kind of walk them through your product, their problems, and then position your product as something that will solve those problems for them. So with that being said, that is your onboarding. It's the user's first experience with your product. You are educating the users. You are gathering data, which is huge. You can use the onboarding to collect their email, phone number, demographic data, and this will help you in marketing in the future. And again, you know, the main use of an onboarding is priming the user for your product, educating them and priming their brain, priming their thought process to, you know, think, Hey, this is a product that I really do need because that's what we want them to think when they hit your paywall and they decide to pay for your products or not. With that being said, the first step to building an amazing onboarding is your preparation and your research. You need to know what your onboarding should look like. And a great way to do that is you can check out competitors and see what they're doing. If you're building a mobile app, look at other mobile apps. If you're building a web app, look at other web apps and see what they're doing on their onboarding. How are they educating the, their users? What questions are they asking? What data are they collecting? Use the top performing apps in the space, right? And I found a really cool website here. It's called Mobbin. And again, if you want the link to this entire document, I'll drop some useful links in here. You can download this document in the description. It'll be completely free. So go check that out. But I found this amazing website called Mobbin where you can actually look Look at other apps onboarding screens. So for example, here's an app called Marcus and you can flow through and check out their entire onboarding screen. Here's another good one. I'm assuming this is a mental health journal app, right? So we can scroll through here. We jump right into it and there is a survey, right? So they're collecting data on their users and priming them to be ready to use their products. Here's Bumbles. I don't have the pro version, so we can't see this. There are a lot of amazing onboardings here. You can even see the subscription and upgrading pages. So I definitely recommend you go check out Mobbin. 
to do your initial market research. And then also think to yourself too, like what data is useful for your future product development? For example, you know, I ask users, what brings you to the app? Do you just want to quit vaping? Do you want to better understand your habit? Are you not sure? Knowing why users are coming into your app or your product and using your product is crucial, right? What are their what other main problems? What are your side effects? How long have you been vaping? How often do you feel the desire to vape? All of this data gives me such a clear picture of who my user is. And then I can tell who's paying and who's not. You know, maybe people who only have the desire to vape one time a day or whatever, they're not likely to pay. And people who vape all the time are more likely to pay. So I can use that in my marketing messaging and to develop my product in the future. So your onboarding will give you a lot of useful information on how you can customize your user experience based on the information that they give you. And the last thing I'll say here about preparation and research is at the end of your onboarding, you want your user to be primed. You want them to walk through their own problems. So that's exactly what I do in my survey. So I strategically ask these questions to make people think about their problem with vaping. Have you made an effort to to quit in the past? How often do you feel the desire to vape? Do you feel that your desire is increasing over time to vape? What area of your life is most affected? How much are you spending vaping, right? These are all questions that walk my users through their own problem. And I am strategically doing this so they think about the problem that they're having a little bit more, again, so they are primed to want to pay and want to fix this problem. So I recommend you go through this exercise, you do the market research, you check out other people's onboardings, and you understand kind of what questions you should be asking. And the way I did this was I dumped it all on one Google Doc. I actually hired a behavioral scientist to help me with this survey. So I kind of brain dumped everything here and you know, even took questions from national drug strategy surveys. These are scientific surveys. They're backed by science. So I know that these questions are valid um, and the data that I'm getting back is useful, not only for my app, but maybe for research in the future, right? So first, when you're constructing your onboarding, I would lay it all out in a Google Doc, just like I did here. And then once you have all your questions and kind of the screens that you want, you can get your onboarding designed. And again, if you've watched the channel, you know exactly what I'm gonna say for the design part of this. You should always go to 99designs. 99designs is hands down the best place to get designs done. What you can do is build a contest and you can get an onboarding screen done, a paywall screen, multiple screens done, whatever you want. Um, You just put up some money and you upload your sketches, you upload your Google Doc uh, so the designers understand your project and then you can pick your winner. You only pay for the winning design. So that is exactly how I got my onboarding done. I launched a contest for the paywall actually, and then this designer won, his name is Zach, super talented guy, and I ended up hiring him to build the rest of my onboarding. So if you're looking for a designer, if you need a designer, 99designs is the only place to go. And then the final step of building an amazing onboarding is optimization and feedback. You should always be A-B testing everything. So for example, for my onboarding survey, or my entire onboarding rather, I use Mixpanel. So I am able to tell how many users started my onboarding to how many users converted, right? Like I can see the conversion rate on each individual step of the questions that I'm asking or of the onboarding screens that are shown to them. So for example, you know, here, uh, 100% of the users have completed the onboarding so far and then around 7% drop off. So you can move these questions around. You can move your screens around and try to optimize for the highest completion rate possible. And that is exactly what you want to optimize for. You want to optimize for a high completion rate, and you also want to optimize for the percentage of people who convert to a paying customer. Changing your onboarding and switching questions around or asking different questions if your users aren't converting a lot, like this is all testing that you should be doing. And a little tip here is to push the harder questions, the more intense questions towards the end of the survey, Because if you do that, the user has already committed their time and they're more likely to answer the tougher questions. And that's pretty much it. You should just learn, put your onboarding out there, experiment, and always make your decisions based on data. Try to get some software like Mixpanel or some other analytics software and really understand where your users are dropping off, understand the conversion rate, the conversion rate to paid, and mess around with your paywall and change things around until you find the most optimized 
conversion rate. If you've stuck around to this point in the video, you probably enjoyed it. So I would definitely appreciate you dropping a like. And if you want, subscribe. If you have any questions whatsoever, be sure to DM me on Instagram. I will literally get back to you always there. We can take a call. We can chop it up. Whatever you need, hit me up on the Instagram DMs. I will always get back to you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the next one and peace.